I know what you're thinking. You want to start a YouTube channel and you've gone through your favorite YouTubers and they all use the Sony a7 III. And you sat there thinking, that looks amazing, but I cannot afford to spend three grand on a camera. So you go to YouTube and you come across the Canon M50, the Sony ZV-1, or maybe even the iPhone 12 Pro. You've then decided that the Sony ZV-1 is the one for you and you go and watch the hundreds and hundreds of technical reviews on this camera to try and get a feel for whether you've made the right decision. How do I know this and how am I inside your head? Because a few weeks ago, I was exactly like you. I've now made over 10 videos with this camera after starting my YouTube channel a couple of months ago. And in this video, I want to share my perspective on using the Sony ZV-1 as a complete novice to cameras and as a brand new YouTuber. In this video, I'm gonna share what I like, what I dislike about the camera, as well as a few things that you probably should think about before purchasing it. I am not a technical camera person. I am extremely new to this. I still find myself Googling ISO and aperture and understanding what it all means. So if you're after a technical review, go and watch one of the other ones because there are thousands of them all over YouTube. What I can offer is a complete beginner's perspective as someone who's just started their YouTube channel. Again, it's not gonna be technical. So if you are expecting technical, go and watch another video. <laughs> also, full disclaimer, I am from the UK, so I cannot bring myself to say Z. So throughout this video, if I say ZV1, know that I mean Z, but I'm not gonna say Z. Straight out of the box, this camera will give you absolutely great picture quality. If you're a new creator like myself and you don't know what all these technical terms mean, like ISO and aperture, we can just use the auto settings on this camera and it will give you something which looks really, really good. It might not be the optimal thing or the best thing, but ultimately all we're interested in is being able to take it out of the box and start creating our videos for our channel. One of the really, really big things that drew me to this camera is the ability to film in 4K. Now I know that 4K is an essential, but I thought the way the world is going, we're probably gonna be heading more towards 4K in the future. So this kind of future proofs that. However, I have noticed that YouTube sometimes takes absolutely ages to upload 4K videos. I think my last video was two to three days of uploading to 4K. So I think for your first couple of YouTube videos, maybe just shoot in 1080p and you'll be absolutely fine. One of the big plus points about this camera and the picture quality is there are so many tutorials online about how to set it up. Within 10 to 20 minutes, if you watch some tutorials from guys like Think Media, you can have this Sony ZV-1 set up and ready to film. The second thing I love about this camera is the autofocus feature. The autofocus is absolutely insane and you definitely won't get this on an iPhone or a smartphone. So if we press product showcase and we turn that on, you'll see that it just snaps, bang. See that? And even when you have smaller objects like this, just like boom, snap. So cool. Brilliant if you're doing things like tech or maybe you just want to pop something up on screen. Just press the product showcase feature before you start recording and I've found that to be super helpful. One thing that I also like is the defocus feature. You can find this on top of the camera and it kind of blurs the background for you without you having to do it. You do have to sit quite close so you'll notice behind me now gets blurrier the further I go in and the further I go back you'll see that I kind of blend in more with the background. Also for vlogging I imagine that is particularly cool because then you can just blur the background and you appear a lot more focused. The third thing that I love about this camera is the flip out screen. So that screen is there. And this was a massive selling point for me when I purchased this camera because I was thinking I would start recording YouTube videos using my iPhone. However, I do have quite an old iPhone and I was torn between upgrading that to the 12 Pro or getting an external camera. I'm extremely pleased that I got this camera because having a flip out screen is so, so helpful particularly when you're a new YouTuber like myself, we mess up things quite a lot. It's really, really helpful having that screen because we can do test clips and we can also see how we look. If I had this on an iPhone, I would have to probably go around to the back of the phone and check how everything looked. However, it's just so much more convenient to have this screen there. That screen is invaluable. A few smaller points that I really, really like about this camera are how small it is. You can just fit it in your coat pocket if you're taking it outside and you won't 
don't have this massive vlogging setup on a tripod with everyone looking at you, etc. I also like how you can use it as a webcam or for live streaming and not look like a potato with the laptop quality camera. <laughs> the final thing that I really like is the external microphone on top of this camera is actually really good. However, I am using an external mic and I think an external mic will always be a better option. But if you are a new YouTuber and you don't want to invest the extra money, the internal microphone on this camera, I think would be more than good enough to just start filming your videos. Having made around 10 or 15 videos with this camera now, I can already see signs of me outgrowing this camera. And I think there's probably two things that you need to be aware of. The first thing, and I'm sure it's the one that you're probably all worried about, is that the lens, unfortunately, isn't quite wide enough for what I wanted. I really like those videos with the blurry backgrounds and how you can just kind of sit here and how it shows a little bit more of your arms. You're not quite going to get that with this camera. In order to achieve the blurry backgrounds, you'll notice that I have to kind of come almost here whereas if i go further back you'll notice that i kind of just blend in with the background unfortunately on the sony zv1 there is no option to change the lens there have been however a few accessories that have come onto the market that make the lens a little bit wider I haven't tried any of these yet, but this could be the answer to my problems. So just bear in mind, if you do want those shots with the blurry background, you're probably going to need to sit or stand really, really close to this camera and probably a lot closer than you think you are. This is particularly an issue if you're in a small room like I am, because there's only so close you can get to the camera. <laughs> also, I'm quite tall, so you'll notice that it cuts off half of my body. And this isn't ideal because I talk with my hands quite a lot and I like to show expression that way. With this camera, I am sat less than an arm's length away, so I can't really put my full arm up because I'll hit the camera. So this should hopefully give you an idea of how close I am to the lens. Overall, I think if you're used to seeing your favorite YouTubers, you just need to bear in mind that you're not going to get that result. And quite rightly so, because this camera is 600 pounds, eight to 900 dollars. You're not gonna get the result of having a $4,000, $5,000 setup. However, what you can get is still brilliant in my opinion. Just to kind of illustrate this on a selfie slash tripod setup, you'll see that the lens is wide enough for me. However, I have really long arms, but if you're kind of more like this, you'll notice that a lot of my head is kind of cropped and this gets worse when you have things like active stabilization. Okay, so this is with active stabilization mode and you can notice that it does crop in a little bit more. Uh, however, I think it's a lot sturdier. However, I'm six foot four and I'm fully extended. This is me fully extended. I couldn't walk around like this, so this is way too long. And um, yeah, I think I would struggle. This is probably just wide enough for me now. However, if you're kind of more like this, you, you're gonna notice that it's cropped in a lot more. The second thing that really does annoy me about this camera is if you're filming in 4K like I do, I film at 4K 25 frames per second. You do get this issue every 20 to 30 minutes where you'll get an error saying that internal warning, basically the camera's got too hot and it needs to be turned off for a couple of minutes. There are some things you can do to kind of mitigate this. There's an option where you can turn the set into high. And this does help, but unfortunately you will still get that error every so often. This is particularly annoying for new YouTubers like myself because we mess up our scenes and scripts quite a lot. So we end up having to make a lot of takes for a certain clip. The only thing I guess we can do is just get better and become better at presenting. And also maybe filming in 1080p might be a better option than 4K, particularly if you're doing a longer video. There are a few minor things that I wish it had. So I wish it had an audio input so you could plug in headphones and monitor the audio because I've had a few times now where the Rode Wireless Go, which you probably can't see, but it's here, has been rubbing on my jumper or on my t-shirt and this causes some audio ruffling in the background. If you had a headphone jack, you could just kind of monitor that before filming and that would be really helpful. The second thing, which is just slightly annoying, is the fact that this camera charges on micro USB. And by this point, we're all so used to USB-C. I don't really understand why they just didn't make it USB-C. 
Overall, I do not regret purchasing the Sony ZV-1 at all. I think it's a fantastic camera, which will allow you to get great quality videos from the get-go. However, there are a few things that I think you need to bear in mind, and I can already see myself upgrading to a full-frame camera sometime in the future. However, for new YouTubers, I think this is probably an ideal option. There are some wider lens attachments available and you can do things to combat the 4K overheating issue as well. They're just some of the things to bear in mind, but I would highly recommend you pick this one up. I think it's a great piece of kit. Let me know down in the comments below if you've either got a Sony ZV-1 or if you're thinking about getting one, or maybe if you're starting a YouTube channel and you're in this process of deciding which camera to go for. I really hope you enjoyed this video if you got some value from it please hit the like button down below other than that take care have a great day and i'll see you in the next one